Hi everybody, this is Julia from abbasheart.net. I'm here to share another incredible testimony. We have a family member that got saved and then passed away very soon after they got saved. And what a waste for him and his incredible story and the way that God encountered him to be lost just because he wasn't alive to share it. So I felt moved to share his story. And um, this is actually a story of my father-in-law. And John will share the history of who he was and what he encountered with Jesus before he passed away. So he's gonna share that part of the story. And I will be back at the very end to share a prayer with you. I'm here with my favorite person in the whole world. And we're gonna share the story of how John's dad turned to Jesus. Yeah, my, dad, uh, my dad's a Muslim, was a Muslim from, uh, from the Middle East and uh, met my mom, came here and you know, <clears throat> my mom was Norwegian and I was kind of raised, uh, you know, as a Christian and my dad, you know, had his Muslim faith and we didn't really know what he was growing up because he never really talked about it when we were really, really small. And as we got older, I'm like, dad, why, why don't you go to church? He's, uh, I'm not part of that, you know? And I started to know at that point, I was probably like six years old that, you know, um, my dad was a different religion, didn't believe in Jesus. And as time went on, and uh, over the years, I ended up getting saved. Um, it became a concern that, you know, my dad wasn't saved. And uh, so I would talk to him about uh, about Jesus and about salvation, and he wanted nothing to do with it. You know, he, was, he wasn't a devout Muslim, but he believed, he was more of a cultural Muslim. But um, I think all in all, he really didn't believe in, in God even. I just, he just kept always saying to me, you know, how could God have a son? And there's only one God, which is a real common m mantra from uh, the Muslim religion. There is only one God. There is only one God. Mm -hmm. And so I would tell him about, you know, what Christianity was. It wasn't just one God. It was, you know, it was, it was one God in three forms, you know, just like water's water, but it comes in three forms. You have steam, ice, and water. So God's kind of the same way when you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So I would try to explain these things to him and he just always would be, you know, not wanting to hear it. And as time went on, uh, Julie and I just kept saying, you know, what are we going to do? And then we decided that, you know what, maybe he'll get scared into it. So we would start praying that he would see hell and that would scare Well, him. actually, this is what our prayer was. Our prayer is if he is going to hell, let him see that. Yeah, Show him where yeah. he's going to be for eternity. So we're, yeah. we weren't praying for bad experience. We're just saying, God, we would rather him experience yeah. it in this life when he can make a decision rather than experience it way too late yeah. and never be able to go back from yeah. that. So I didn't want my dad to go to hell. <laughs> right, right. So we're, that's what, that's what our specific yeah. prayer was. So, so it was just, you know, if he's going there, let's, let's show him what it's like. Yeah. And so when I would stay over there on the weekends, we'd go to visit him yeah. and we lived in the city and we would stay in the spare room and it was just across the hallway from where my dad was. And I would, wake up at like three in the morning and he'd be like screaming and groaning. And then I'd be like, what the heck? And I'd run in there mm -hmm. and he would just roll over, look at me and turn over, you know, I'm like, are you all right? And he wouldn't say nothing. I'm ah, fine. You know, and I would then, hear it too. I would wake up from him groaning. And then the next day I would say to him, you know, what happened last night? You were, you know, making noises and screaming. And he goes, ah, just, you know, just weird dreams, weird dreams. I'm like, well, what kind of dreams? Nothing. I don't want to talk about it. And this happened several times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we came to the conclusion, like, you know what, is is he maybe seeing hell where he could possibly be going uh, due to his non-belief? And we just kind of... Uh, just kept know, praying. We kept, kept praying, praying that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then my dad ended up getting uh, getting really sick. And this was 2015. And I had moved to California and he was still in Chicago. So I would go back and visit and he ended up getting put in a nursing home. And during that time, he got MRSA in his mouth, which is pretty bad. And they didn't know. And so it kind of really took over his body. And as he uh, started to decline, he lost his ability to speak. And it was really hard and he wouldn't say much because his mouth just obviously was in real pain, but it affected his larynx and things like that. And uh, my sister was in there one day and she said that, he woke up from what, like, what appeared to be sleeping or a nap, and he just looked terrified. And he looked around the room, and he grabbed my daughter, my sister's arm, and he says, Hell, hell is hot. And my sister said, Yeah, hell is hot. It, what do you mean? He says, Is it hot? Is hell hot? 
and my sister Shar explained to him the lake of fire, what it's like, and he went back to bed and she was trying to get him to hear, you know, uh, salvation again, but he still, he didn't want any part of it. And then about two hours later, he woke up again and he started seeing a lot of our dead relatives. He saw my mom who had passed away. My mom was a devout Christian and he would point them out and he'd say, R -r 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 and, and then he pointed out my grandmother on my mom's side, who was also a devout Christian. And then he pointed out two other friends that were also Christians and he was seeing them and he was smiling when he was seeing them and he was happy to see them and it appeared there was a connection there, my sister said, and then he would go back to sleep. Well, another time he wakes up and he's in sheer terror and he just says, hot, hot. And my sister says, what do you mean, dad? Is it hot? Does she want me to turn the AC on or open a window? And he says, no, hot, hot. And so she says, uh, dad, what do you, what do you want? I, I'm not understanding you. And then he just turns to her and he says, in a real grovelly voice, is, is hell hot? And she explains it to him again and says, Dad, you know what you're seeing. This is everything I've told you about. You're seeing the lake of fire. You're seeing what hell is all about. And she said, you need to accept Jesus. That's the only way that you're going to avoid any of this stuff. And so he laid back down in bed and he turned to her and looked at her. And she said he had complete and utter fear in his face. And he shook his head. And he says, yes, I'm ready. And she gave him the uh, salvation prayer and he accepted it. And she stayed there for a little bit longer and then, uh, um, and, and left. And then the next day he passed away. So I really believe that God kept him alive long enough mm -hmm. and let him see where he was going mm -hmm. in this, this last hour. And, uh, you know, by the grace of God, he made it in mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, so. So we want to encourage all of you who are believing for your relatives and you're praying and you're not seeing anything, that God is hearing those prayers, that he wants your relatives in heaven more than you do. And just to continue to pursue this because God is doing something. Um, so that's why we felt it was important to share this testimony. Um, our beloved Bubba Jem wouldn't be able to share this, but his mm. his story can encourage you to keep praying and believing for your relatives. Mm. And one of the main concerns of Bubba Jim not coming to Jesus was he did not want to um, dishonor his family lineage. He was a very, um, he, he just was very connected to his family. His culture and he, in, uh, in the Middle East and uh, yeah. everything, you know, that's where he came from. Right, but he was <laughs> not a practicing Muslim. So we, so we would always mm. so to him like, Hey, just so you know, you're not a great Muslim. You eat pork and you date Jewish women. And so <laughs> like, according to your book, this, you're not going to, you know, he's probably not going to let you in. So anyway, um, that's our little story of our sweet mm -hmm. Bubba Jim. And now we'll be able to enjoy him in eternity. And we hope we'll see you there too. So here's the prayer. If you have a loved one that you are praying for, I just want to encourage you to continue praying. God is hearing your prayers and he is doing something and you can pray for years and years and years and it's kind of like an avalanche. You know, snow um, falls, it's very light, it doesn't do a lot if there's just a little bit, but if you have layers and layers of snow, it can be so powerful, it can be like an avalanche. And so that's what I believe happens for um, these tough prayers, for these people that have very hard hearts, that we need to keep pressing in with prayer and not give up because that avalanche is going to fall one day and it's gonna be falling for the kingdom of God. And so I'm gonna have you agree with me on this prayer. Just listen, agree, and receive these words for your relatives and your family members. Dear Heavenly Father, I love my family so much. Now that I know the truth about Jesus, I'm fearful for those who don't believe. You created people so you could personally enjoy each one of them for eternity. You love our loved ones more than we do. I will no longer beg for salvation because I know it's your will for each of my relatives to be saved. I exchange my wrong attitude of sorrow and anxiety for a spirit of joy and expectation. Lord, send people who are unafraid to speak the truth, the right people at the perfect time. Soften hearts to hear your message of hope through Jesus. I choose to walk away from sorrow, anxiety, and fear for my loved one's eternal destiny. Instead, I promise to remain sensitive to your spirit's prompting about what to pray 
and when to pray. No matter how badly things appear in the natural realm, I choose to believe you're working in the spiritual realm. I trust in your faithfulness to answer the cries of my heart, for I know they came from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Be encouraged. Just keep praying. Just keep being faithful in the little things. And remember that picture of an avalanche. One day, that kingdom will fall and crumble in the name of Jesus. And his light and his truth will invade their life. And um, even if it's the very last hour, all that matters is eternity. So God bless.